Compound interest, future value, present value, unit nine. Let us begin. So in this particular chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate interest rates and the number of compounding periods. It's compound interest. Compounding periods got to be important there somewhere, right? We're going to compute the future values, sometimes called maturity values. We're going to compute the present values. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, long-term promissory notes. And then we're going to bring it all together uh, and work on equivalent values problem. Okay, we saw equivalent values in unit five in the simple interest case. Similar kind of thinking, the timelines are very important to us there. We're going to use all our formulas, of which there is really only two in this unit, so we don't have to get too crazy about it. It's a lot of doing, a lot of application, there's a lot of usefulness, but really it only comes down to two, two formulas, okay? So. so what is compound interest? Right? Compound interest often described or it had been described by Einstein as the eighth wonder of the world. Now, I'm not sure if Einstein actually said that. A lot of quotes attributed to Einstein were actually said by Einstein. A lot of people said, hey, this would sound really cool if Einstein said it. Well, who knows? Uh, the guy is dead, so how could we tell? Right? Who could verify it? But anyway, it's been called the eighth wonder of the world. And essentially, the wonders of compound interest is that we earn interest. Woo! Yes! Loving earning that interest, getting that rental on the capital. And then we reinvest that interest, and we get interest on that interest. And then we take that interest on the interest, and we get interest on that interest. It's amazing. And then we take that interest that we've earned on the interest that we've earned on the interest and we reinvest that interest and we get interest on that. It is a money making machine. We're just making interest on top of interest, right? It's amazing. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, Alan, is this legal? Like, I mean, I, 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 should you be saying this on a YouTube video? Yes, it's legal in fact it's encouraged this earning interest on earn interest this is how you get rich let's look at an example to see how wonderful this is look at the simple interest case here on that table right now i'm just assuming we're earning it at 10 percent per annum just so that the math is easy to see okay? and on a simple interest case like we saw in unit five we get our we invest our ten thousand bucks we get a thousand dollars in a rental for our capital, right? Our interest, good, good, I like that. In every period, the $10,000 slows in. But we look at the compound interest, look at that. First period, we get our thousand bucks. Then the thousand bucks goes in and becomes part of principal. The next period, we get $1,100, a hundred extra dollars, just because of the wonders of compounding. And we look at period three. And now we're getting $1,210, $210 more than we would have in the simple interest case because that interest is being converted to principal and we're earning interest on the interest. Now look at the comparison. After five years, we've got $5,000 for the interest. Not complaining about that at all. But in the compound interest case, $6,105.10. Like an extra 11, over $1,100 extra. What did we do? Nothing, right? We were just earning interest on the interest. It's great. Like I said, it's just an amazing money-making machine. Key thing is you want to be receiving the interest, not paying the interest. <laughs> if you're paying the interest, this is a very bad game. And it could go on and on about the, uh, you know, the really dark side of debt. When you look at the compound interest, you think, okay, well, somebody else is paying this. The debtor's paying this. So before you get into too much debt, keep that in the back of your mind always. Compounding can work against you as well. Okay, so we have really only one formula in this entire chapter. We rearrange it and we create a second formula, but really, is that a new formula? No. Okay, so we have our formula for future value, right? FV future value. 
And the future value is based on how much you start off with, the present value, sometimes called the, the uh, principal value, and interest. And that's a geometric progression. That's how the compounding is mathematically sort of baked into this formula. And one plus I is the periodic interest rate. And we're going to have a couple interest rates floating around, and we're going to want to keep track of the two. can get a little tricky. Okay? N is the number of compounding periods in the entire term of the loan. So for the whole entire length of the loan, this is how many times we do that wondrous thing where we take interest and convert it to principal. So with that, that's all we need to know. Now, we're starting to think, okay, um, I, okay I, I might require some work, but other than that, that's that. This is it. Know how to use the exponents, right? This is why when we were practicing in unit one and unit two, how how to do exponents properly, because we're setting ourselves up for this. Okay. So we have a periodic interest rate. That's I. That's what's going into the formula. Okay. But nobody gives you, hey, you're going to earn three percent every six months. Nobody talks like that, right? They say, okay, uh, we're going to pay you six percent. And we're going to compound it semi-annually. So they're the same thing, but nobody says that, right? We like to quote annual rates. People could relate to that. People understand that. It's the you know traditional way of expressing this stuff. Okay. So periodic rate interest is the interest rate per period, and in the case of uh, we see below, where you have a four percent compounded semi-annually. That means that is the nominal rate. Okay. It's expressed as an annual rate, and the compounding period is uh, stated right there in its expression. So when we start talking about interest rates, we really talk about 4%. PA is Latin, it's just a little acronym for Latin per, na per annum, per year. Okay, per year, 4% per year. Compounded how often? Semi-annually, meaning twice a year. What does that mean? From a, uh, a periodic interest rate, well, how much do you get semi-annual six months? So how much do you get every six months? Well, if I get 4% for a whole year, for six months, I get 2%, right? I just take the nominal rate and I divide it by the number of compounding periods. So the periodic rate I, right, just equal to J, the nominal rate that we're quoted, and that's usually the rate that's going to be given to you, and that's usually the rate that'll be in the uh, the loan covenants. That's usually the rate that'll be in the proposal. Uh, so that's J is going to be the rate that you're typically going to be given. Okay, we divide it by the number of compoundings. Now look at M. M. Be very careful here because we have an M. M for Mike. N. N for November. Okay. M is the number of compoundings per year. Recall N as in November is the number of compoundings the entire term. Very easy to get the two mixed up. I have seen it where they get mixed up and you get this weird periodic interest rate in the formula. Okay, so be very careful the difference between your M and N's. Okay, M is the number of compounding periods per year for one single year, not the term. Okay, <laughs> I have a slide here just to reiterate it. I know paranoia is a nasty thing. Okay, N, number of compoundings in the entire term. How do we figure that out? We look at the number of years in the term, let's say five, number of compoundings per year, M. Let's say that's two, five times two is 10. So N is 10. N goes into the formula in the nice little exponent part. Okay. Again, N and M are related to each other, but they are not the same. Special focus on, on how they're different. It's not complicated, but sometimes in a pressure situation, uh, things can go a little bit, a uh, little bit crazy. And the last slide for this particular uh, part is just a little bit of practice. So we have a sum of money invested at 2.4% compounded semi-annually. And it's typically, again, like I said, about two seconds ago, how we talk about interest rates at, at this juncture, okay? We have a rate and then 
its frequency of compounding, aka VM. Okay, for three and a half years, what's that nominal rate? Nominal rate? Well, it's 2.4% compounded semi-annually. Ah, no trick there, right? What's the number of compounding periods per year? It's compounded semi-annually, okay, every half year. So then there's two of those half years in one year. So M is two. What's the periodic interest rate? All you do is take that 2.4, the J, divided by the two, the M, and you get 1.2. Not very hard, not high level math right now. Okay. Most of the math here, not super complicated. The concepts though are very, very deep and very rich. Number of compounding periods in the term. I have three and a half years. I have an M of two. 3.5 times two is seven. Number of compounding periods in the term is seven. Bringing it all together to find the compounding factor, get one plus. Now we've represented our interest rates in percentages so far. However, as we know from our previous experience, when we actually go to put an interest rate in a formula, we represent it as a proportion. Okay. So one plus I is one plus 0 0.012, okay, it's just what we found with periodic interest rate, close that bracket, power of seven. Figure out what that is, and you get the numerical value of the compounding factor, okay? The numerical value of the compounding factor will be 1.087, but I want you to try making sure that you end up there, because that's extremely important. Nothing else that I'll talk about in this entire chapter is of any use if we're not comfortable using exponents. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you uh, very much, and we'll see you when we do some practice. In Let's do some practice with our new future value formula. Just remember future value, the present value of principal value, one plus the periodic interest rate, all pa to the power of n, the number of compounding periods in the entire term that you're looking at. So what do we have here? We have a deposit of $1,000, earns interest at 4% per annum, which just means per year, compounded quarterly, kind of know that there's four of those compoundings every single year, four times every year we take that interest, convert it into principal. Woo, wondrous event. And we do that uh, for the first three years in five months. At that time, ooh, the interest rate changes to 6% compounded monthly. Ha ha, more compounding periods. Awesome. Uh, and now we want to know what is the value of the deposit two years after the change in the interest rate. Okay, lots of moving parts going on here. There's lots of moving parts. First thing we always want to do is the timeline. Timelines are awesome give us a very good sense of what we're trying to calculate because there's a lot of things going on and it is a very nice tool to organize things. The calculations aren't that hard. Look at that formula up there. That formula is not that hard to deal with, right? right? It's got a couple of numbers and an exponent. Big whoop, right? But lots of things going on. Easy to lose uh, one of those bits. So for the beginning, we have a balance of, of $1,000, sorry being $2,000. Oh, I'm ambitious. Okay. Uh, and then that goes on for three years and five months. So three years, five months. Right? And over that period of time, we earn 4%. And I'll just abbreviate that to quarterly. Then interest rate changes for the next, and it remains that interest rate for two more years. So that's up to five years and five months, although it's just two years. We have a 6% interest rate, and that's compounding is monthly. So with the different and the changing of interest rates, I will have to do at least two calculations here. 
Step one, I do at the first interest rate. Okay, so step one, I need to find the future value after three years, five months, right? Right there. I need to know how much we, uh, we had earned or how much was our entire value of our investment at that point when the interest rate changed. Because once the interest rate changes, the I changes and I have to do a different calculation. Okay, or another calculation. So our first step now is what's N? Right? We want to think of what N is. What's the value of that exponent? Well, N will be, ooh, three years, five months. Oh, that's a little bit of a tricky one. So three years, three years, five months, three years, five months. What am I counting? What am I counting here? Right? Ah, uh, quarters. It's 4% compounded quarterly. I'm counting the number of quarters. So how many quarters in three years? Well, three years times by four of those quarters every year, 12 quarters there. Now, in the five months, how many quarters? Well, each quarter is three months long, so I know I have at least one of those, but then I have a remainder of two. So I have one and two out of possibly three. Now, you're thinking, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, back up here. Quarters, I'm thinking four here, four, four, four. No, there's four of them in a year, but how long is each one? All right, 12 divided by four is three months. A quarter is three months in length. So we have two of the three months, okay? Which will represent as how many quarters? One point. Six, 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 woo, spooky, six, seven quarters. We add those up, and we get the number of quarters, 12 plus 1.66667, and that is 13.66667 quarters. Now we're all set to do the calculation. Okay. So I'm just going to call it future value 1, because it's going to be the first one we're going to calculate, because I'm going to have to calculate another one for 6%. And so we start off with $1,000. 1 plus, now what was our nominal interest rate? It was 0 0.04, divided by the number of compoundings per year, which is 4, right? 4 quarters in a year, all to the power of 13.666667. All that stuff we were doing, you know, early part of the unit, wondering, wow, ah, exponents, weird exponents, exponents with fractions, mixed fractions, and all this other stuff. What the heck are we doing that for? Well, boom, we need it all now. Okay. So we worked that through. Now, as a matter of calculation, sometimes to minimize silly errors or order of operation errors, you may find it convenient, and this is the way I kind of approach it, even though I know my TI-84 will do the order of operations fairly cleanly and neatly if I specify everything correctly. I just worry about not specifying everything correctly. So I go 0 0.04 divided by 4. I get 0 0.01. Okay, easy enough. Add that to the 1, and I got 1.01. .01. Then I do the exponent. Then I multiply that answer by the 1,000. Is make sure that I don't make any goofy mistakes. And I get 11.45. And I'm going to carry a lot of decimals here because this is an intermediate calculation. Okay. First step. That's the value of my investment after three and a half years. Or three years, five months, my bad. Okay. Now the second step is I'm not done yet. I need the future value two years after the change in interest rates. So we got another two more years to go. So I'm looking for future value two. When I'm calculating future value two, what do I start off with? I start off with what I ended up with uh, from the first future value calculation. Because after three years and five months, which is my starting point now, I have accumulated $1,145 and some change. So that becomes uh, my new principal value. Right? I'm just reinvesting that entire sum in something new 
at a slightly higher interest rate. And then 1 plus my periodic interest rate, which is my nominal rate, 0 0.06, divided by the number of compoundings. It's 12 months in a year, so 12 of those every year. And then what's n here? n a little simpler with the, with the monthly counting. I have two years, 12 months a year, 2 times 12, and I've got 24 compounding periods. That one's a little, little less brain sweat than the other one. Roll that through. Again, encourage you to practice that. And I get my future value, which is my ultimate answer, of $1,291.35. And there we are. I sealed the deal. Done. Right? Nice lot of steps. A lot of beef. Got to work with the formula a lot there. Drawing out the timeline. Uh, and so it was, it was a lot of excitement in that one. Now the slides kind of go through it uh, step by step in probably neater handwriting than I have. Uh, and just that's a nice way to look at it as well. Okay. Let's do another question. I'm going to leave question one uh, for you. That's just a straight application of the future value formula. I encourage you to do that uh, just to make sure you got the, the basic part of that done in, in, in a manner that, that works well for you. Alternatively, I'm going to focus in on question number two because question number two's got uh, is a little bit uh, trickier. Actually, it's not trickier. It's just longer and and's got some unique aspects to it or some unique considerations. So we have a variable rate loan, demand loan, showed an initial balance of two thousand bucks. We made some payments of five hundred after eighteen months, four hundred after thirty months, and an unknown amount of payment after five years which right away bells are ringing in my head. I'm going to guess that that is that thing that we want to discover that we don't already know, right? X is probably going to mark the spot there, but we read on. Uh, interest was 5.5% compounded semi-annually for the first two years, 6.5% compounded monthly for the remaining time. Aha, here it is. What was the size of the final payment? Okay, we got lots of stuff going on. This is super. It's a great puzzle here. We've got money coming to uh, we got a loan amount we got money flowing out we got interest rate changes we got payments happening at different periods of time we got everything going on here Woo! definitely want that timeline though okay so what did we start off with well the beginning in the beginning we had 2000 and then what happened after 18 months $500 gets paid. Now I'm going to put that on a little bit different line here so I can distinguish between money coming in and money going out. And then at the 24 month mark, let's give that a big slash, right? Interest rate changes. Okay, so there's going to be calculation going to have to happen then, right? Because as the interest rate changes, that means my eye changes. That means uh, I, I've got to do some more calculations. Okay. And then what happens? We read on with excitement. After $400, after 30 months, sorry, uh, we make another payment. 30 months, make another payment of $400. And then at the very end, after five years, which we'll call 60 months, just to kind of keep it all counting in months, we make a payment of, I don't know, X. That wonderful symbol representing... I don't know. Okay, how do I start this thing? Well, from our previous experience, we we know that when um, when, th when the interest rate changes, we've got to switch from one calculation to the next the other calculation. So something something ch I have to do something at the interest rate change. We know that from before. Okay. So let's look and see how much do we owe when the interest rate changes. So let's. Let's make that step one, right? We need to find out how much do we owe? How much do we owe or is owed to us when that interest rate changes? So that is essentially assuming that this 24 month period 
some sort of focal date to us, right? At least at the beginning. Okay. So using our new toy, we're going to find the value of that $2,000 at the focal date and the value of the $500 at the focal date, right? And we did this in uh, Unit 5 at the very end when we did equivalent payments and simple interest. So same kind of thinking, right? It was important then, it's important now. So how much do we have owing? That's like finding what's the value of the, fu does the future debt. And now we look at everything in terms of that 24-month period. We have to compare all these cash inflows and outflows, amounts owing and payments at a common date. Okay, they got to be compared. Apples to apples, oranges to oranges kind of thing. Common date is very important here. Okay, and then what do we have? One plus the nominal interest rate, which was 5.5%, 0 0.055. And that was compounded semi-annually, so I divide that by 2 to get i. And then how many periods, so this is semi-annual, so in two years, how many semi-annual periods are there? There's two per year, two years, two times two, it's four. Eh, wow, that's not, that's not crazy math at all, is it? And then we make a payment, that's money going away, right? That's, a, that's reducing the value of the amount owing. So that's a subtraction, right? We take out the payment. And then but we have to look at that $500 also in a common time frame, in a common time period. And it has the same interest rate, right? Common interest rate through the whole problem. Okay, semi-annual. Okay. And then, but it's 18 months to 24 months, that's six months. That's only one semi-annual period. And so that is a one. Okay, so let's just break this down a little bit more. We've got 2,000, 1.0275 to the power of four, minus 500, 1.0275 power of one. Okay, equals to 229.242519 minus 513.75. And ultimately, we get our answer, at least our initial answer, I should say, $1,715.492519. Okay, so this is the value, this is the, the, the amount remaining owing two years from the beginning. Okay. So step two, as we carry this a little bit forward, now we need to go from the two-year mark out to the five-year mark. And while we're doing that, calculate what is the value of that outstanding amount owing. Okay. Step two. Okay. So a couple of things, same process as before. First thing is we need a focal date. Now it's most convenient to make that focal date the 60 month mark. Why is that you ask? Well, I look at it and I say X, the one payment happens in that period. Why do I want, if I, ha if I, if I don't make it, you can make the focal point whatever you want, right? We saw that in unit five, right? So that's not anything magical. But what we want to do is we want to pick an easy focal date. And just like when we were in Unit 5, we, the easy focal date often happened to be where the payment was. Because that way I don't have to deal with nasty coefficients in front of the X. I just go X equals 2. Boom. And boom, answer pops out. I like to minimize complications. I like to minimize stupid errors, okay? Stupid errors sneak up on you all on their own. You don't need to go looking for them, right? So let's keep it simple. The old KISS principle. Okay, so our focal date, the 60-month part. So now we're going to find the future value of all those cash flows at 60 months. Ooh, we're going to write a little at symbol just to show you how damn cool I am. Okay. So what is this equal to? So we have a, a, an amount owing, right? 
So let's just maybe just break this down into what, what's going on here. Okay, so uh, amount owing is going to equal to the uh, the future value of that four hundred dollar payment, right? Plus the value of x, right? Payments have to balance out how much is owing, right? That's why we call it equivalent payments, right? We saw that in the very end of Unit 5. Okay. Now, I want X all by itself. So if I look at the amount owing, right? I should put a little future value on, uh, on there just to kind of be consistent. Okay. Minus... The future value of that payment, well, that equals the x. X marks the spot, right? So I got two future value, little two little future value calculations. The difference between the two is x. So the amount owing, right? We're starting off with the seventeen hundred fifty and fifteen dollars and some change, and now we find the future value of that amount. So seventeen hundred and fifteen dollars. Point. Four nine two five one nine. New interest rate, which is why we're doing all this stuff in the first place. Zero point zero six five. It's over twelve months, so it's going to be divided by twelve. Now I'm just going to pull down to my uh, timeline. Okay, from the time that the interest rate changed, when we owed the seventeen hundred fifteen dollars and a little bit to the end of the period that's 36 months right to month 24 to month 60 the difference there is 36 months okay so 36 up in that exponent subtract from it the payment four hundred dollars and again same long calculation for the uh, periodic interest rate 0 0.065 divided by 12. Now, how many months from month 30 to month 60? 30 months on that one, right? Okay. We do that math, crunch it up. Uh, about a little under 2,100 bucks, 2,083 dollars and I'll just call it 76 cents minus... 470.373014. There, subtract it, and therefore x equals to the difference of $1,613.39. So, our big balloon payment at the very end uh, $1,613 and, and a few pennies. Okay. So, lots of, lots of fun and excitement in that one, huh? Next! We will do present value. Stay tuned. The journey continues.